Hey, this is Ralph Lockley with SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com. Today we're starting another job site. This time we're back out in the Pembroke, North Carolina area. And as you see, we already have the foundation going. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a crawl space installation procedure. Let's walk the job. So as you can see now, we're setting up our corner post. He's leveling it up. This is our garage foundation wall. You'll see how we have the eight inch block wall there, right here, and then you got the fours. So what's gonna happen is brick's gonna go here because all of our garages are finished with brick on the inside. Now, beyond that four inch wall, we're gonna go on this side of the wall and come up with stone. So this is actually what, you, what we call our wall detail. And in the drawings, we can show you that wall detail as well. So as you see behind me, we've got the crawl space going in. One of the first things you'll notice is that we go a lot taller on our crawl spaces. Now the reason why we've done that is that because when you're building these homes and especially if the homeowner decides to put the HVAC underneath the crawl space, if you're going to the bare minimum, it's going to be ridiculously hard to maneuver that crawl space. So as you'll see, we go up 40 inches off of the slab to the top of our foundations. Now, that equates to a little bit more money, but also it gives you more comfort when trying to maneuver those crawl spaces. And when you do decide to put HVAC in the crawl spaces, it doesn't restrict you from moving about as much. So the main thing that we're looking for when actually building these foundations is we start with the blueprint and you'll see we have color-coded foundation walls. And those color-coded foundation walls, they actually represent how a wall is to be built. So in this case, we're gonna focus on say this wall here, which is gonna have a stone facing. So you wanna reference this and then when you turn over here, you're gonna reference the green color that references actually how this wall is gonna be built. So now this is this same wall that we were just looking at on the blueprints, that green wall, this colored green, but in the field, here is this actual wall. And you see it's really simple. It's just an eight inch foundation masonry wall. The only difference is, is that later on down the road in the process, we're going to face this with stone and then stone's going to continue up the wood frame wall. So in reality, it's a very simple, simple layout, simple build, but you have to use certain materials in certain locations to get the details right to end up with the end result the way the plan shows. That's why we have our plans color coded the way we do and have the materials figured the way we do because if they use the wrong material or use different material in one place that's supposed to be used in another, it can throw off our whole count and kind of cause the, jo uh, the job site to kind of become chaotic. So that's the reason why we're always on the job site looking through these details to make sure we get them right. And so when we're ready with the foundation and call in for our inspection, one of the first things the inspector is going to come and do, he's going to come with a measuring tape more than likely, he's going to measure the projection of the anchor bolts out of the masonry units. And so he's going to be looking for this measurement, typically around three inches. And in different counties, you know, it's different requirements. But what we've learned to do is to do overkill and make a, uni a uniform procedure across the board. Now, this is what you call way overkill when it comes to anchor bolts. You'll see we've got about a three inch projection here. Look how far this anchor bolt is going into. It's going into two solid masonry units here which oftentimes you're only required just half of this distance. But in some areas we built, they require these lengths, so we decided to implement it in all of our builds to make sure we don't have any issues. And that's basically the concept that we use whenever we're designing and building custom homes. So we don't have to worry about when we're building in one area versus the area, other area, remembering exactly which particular unit to use. We make it uniform across the board. And so the last thing I'm going to cover in this video is something that you should always do when starting out on any job. We've got our purchase orders that was submitted in for our block work. We got purchase orders submitted for our brick work, mortar, mortar sand, fill sand, anchor bolts, foundation vents. The whole order for this job was delivered. And so what we're going to show you now is the procedure that we use using technology to go out on the job site, take photographs, do a count, mark it up, send it back to the office. So. Charlene in the office can actually go through those images and verify that we've gotten delivered everything that we've paid for and then what's going to happen then once she checks off on that as the guys are making progress building this foundation at the end when everything's said and done we'll come back again do a material count and make sure that everything's lining up and if we need to uh, critique or refine our process in our material takeoffs we do so then once the foundation is completed very very important 
that you actually take inventory of the materials as they come in and then once you're finished with the job. That'll help you run a much, much more efficient and smooth job. I'm Ralph Locklear with SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com. Southeastern General Contractors, where making clients happy is our number one goal. Learn more at SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com.